Welcome to the Picking the Roots, and it's time to talk about pre-cons. It's the Dominaria United Pre-Con Review. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the New Picking Nerds. We got more videos for you, including this one if you want to support the channel. Patreon.com, probably the best way, because it's basically like you giving us money directly from your pocket. You can go to the link in the description to find out more, and if you do, we'll love you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Very true. If you want to support us indirectly, because Patreon is directly, you can use first TCGplayer.com. It's the best place for buying magic cards. You go there, get the magic cards you were going to buy anyway. Same price, no increase in price. But you support the nerds by starting with our link in the description below. Same is also true for Dragon Shields. They have the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And if you buy those sleeves, you can sleeve up all those cards you just got from TCG Player. But now they're protected and they will not get damaged because of these awesome, awesome sleeves. Also, if you want to look cool, your chest will be protected from the harsh environment. With Into the AM shirts, you're going to look pretty sweet. We get talked about quite a lot. We're all the talk around the town. Uh, you get 10% off if you use our link in the description. So actual discount on real things you can buy in the description. Yes. And this channel also sponsored by Moxfield.com. It is a deck building website and we have an ad within this video. Guess what, BZ? They can put their guesses for where it'll be using a timestamp in the description, but it doesn't matter because it will not be correct because nobody gets it correct. We are O for hundreds. Hundreds have tried, hundreds have failed. And everyone who's gotten it has cheated. And everyone who's gotten it, who are claims to it, has cheated. And this channel is not sponsored by birthdays, but I would like to instead still wish happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today before we get started. All right, so we got a couple new pre-cons from Dominaria United. We have Legends, Legacy, and Painbow. So, BZ, what are we going to talk about with these decks? Well, for each one, we're going to talk about the Face Commander, the deck's game plan, how good the deck is in general, the best reprints, all the new cards, five budget ads we'd recommend, five budget cuts we'd recommend, five non-budget ads we'd recommend, and then... Just to mention before we get into it, the decks are about $45. Yeah, so you can spend $45. Go get this on Amazon right now if you'd like to get a little cheaper on TCGplayer.com using our affiliate link in the description below. All right, let's get into it. Legends Legacy. The face commander for this, this is a Mardu deck, and it is Dihada, Binder of Wills. One, red, white, black, legendary planeswalker, Diada starts with five loyalty. Plus two, up to one target legendary creature gains vigilance, lifelink, and indestructible until your next turn. Minus three, reveal the top four cards of your library, put any number of legendary creatures from among them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. Create a treasure token for each card put into the graveyard this way. Minus 11, gain control of all non-land permanents until end of turn. Untap them, they gain haste until end of turn. Diada Binder of Wills can be your commander. So the most important line of this by far is that it can be your commander, obviously. Yeah, it's going to care about legendary creatures. It wants you to give them abilities that would make me think that this deck's overall game plan is to play legendary creatures, gear towards combat, and then pump them up for some bigger attacks. She makes them so that they won't die to a board wipe or they won't get beaten up in combat. So I think this deck is skewed pretty aggressively. Yeah, um, it's... Uh, as a Planeswalker goes, it's pretty good at protecting itself. You do have to have a board before you play it, but it's going to plus to make sure a creature can basically stick around as long as it's not an exile effect and block. Uh, it's also going to minus for some card draw. It does a lot of little things, but I don't think it's too crazy strong overall. Yeah, I think the plus is pretty bad as far as Planeswalkers that can be your commander. It really doesn't protect itself or give you much of anything, but the minus is pretty sweet because it lets you protect her after you make some treasures, and it can draw you like four cards if your deck has enough legendary lands or sorceries even. She also has a pretty big starting loyalty uh, of five, which for a four mana Planeswalker is high, meaning early in the game, if you can, especially if you can talisman this out, like a turn two talisman into a turn three this, it could potentially be protected and get going really quickly. Yeah, this deck's trying to win with like Day of Destiny, pumps legendary creatures, Hero's Podium, which is like coat of arms for your legendary creatures, and then Black Labor Forge, which is like pick one legendary creature and be faced with it. Yeah, uh, and the average mana value is 3.52. I think that's mostly because we're dealing with a lot of legends here, right? Because legends tend to have a, you know, a bigger effect, but they cost more mana. Yeah, this deck is kind of a little clunky. There's only like, I think there was 10 two drops, and three one drops, and everything else is a little bit more expensive. There was like almost no creatures you can play early. Let's talk about the commander. We like to talk about the best reprints in the deck. And I'm going to be honest, there's one really, really good reprint, and then they stink. 
because it's Shizo Death Storehouse, which was $24 for the cheapest version of the card. Which was the foil version from Mystery Booster. It was, yeah, because there was a lot uh, of repeat foils in Mystery Booster. Other than that, these reprints kind of stink. Yeah, Storehouse was 24 bucks, 36 for the non-foil. Day of Destiny was the next one at $5. Then Bantu's Monument. Eh? Five dollars? Un- uncommon from Amonkhet? I don't know who's playing this card so much. Like, it's cool. It does things, but five dollars. And then Dragon Skull Summit, four dollars. And lastly, Reliquary Tower at three fifty. Those are the best reprints. Yikers. One of the best reprints is the Reliquary Tower. Something they throw in these decks all the time. This is kind of sad reprints. I mean, Shizo, don't get me wrong. That one's good. That's a really good reprint. Loved it. I love seeing cards like that in the pre-con. That said... These things. This is bad reprints. This is not what we want to see. Boo. Could have at least given us Shizo, Shinka, and Aganjo Castle, right? Boo. I'm yeah. Just... I mean, the Legendary Land is so much nice synergy. Now we can talk about the new cards in the pre-con. There's nine other ones besides Dihada. And the first one is Shaned Sleeper's Scourge. This card seems sweet because it's one of Mardu for a 2-4, and your Legendary stuff draws you cards now, and your Legends have Menace. Yeah, I think that this should just be your commander, 100%. You would switch this out? I would switch this out. This this is what I would do. I think that this is such good card advantage engine that it lets you you basically remove down to like three or four card advantage engines in your deck because this thing will draw you so many cards so easily. Yeah, a lot of the time in the upgraded versions of this deck, what you can do is just play Shaney and then play like, here's a legendary land, I'll draw a card. Here's a legendary one drop, I'll draw a card. The fact that it draws those legendary lands takes this card from like, eh, to I think amazing. Like, it gives you at least two, maybe three per turn. Yeah, I think it, this isn't something you rush out into the battlefield. It's something that you wait until you can follow it up with a couple spells. Yep, what's next? Uh, it is Kadric, Soul Kindler, and this makes copies of your legends that gain haste, but the legend rule doesn't apply because why does it, it doesn't, is there even a legend rule anymore in Magic? I think they got rid of it. Hey, there's only legends. There's only legends and the legend rule doesn't apply, so I don't know why we're bothering with that anymore. <laughs> They get haste. This card's whatever. It kind of, again, it feels kind of like another deck. It wants you to make Helm of the Hosts. Basically, yeah. They get haste, but they go away. Varak Warped Sengir is a three mana 2-2. Two, two. It copies you the life abilities you pay. So if you pay one for an Arid Mesa, you can pay one more life to go get another Mountain or Plains. This is kind of cool. Certainly doesn't do almost anything in this deck, so get it out of here as soon as you can. But I like it as its own thing. It seems really unique. Yeah, just I think just like uh, Kadric that we just talked about, it's just another deck, right? It's not that it's a bad card. It's that it doesn't really synergize with this deck. Same thing with Blade Wing, Deathless Tyrant. This is like a graveyard strategy. I don't know what this is for this deck. It doesn't fit, but it's going to be its own deck, right? Because you're just going to play this big 6-6 beater, get in and make some, uh, what, zombies? I think yeah, zombies of Menace. The haste is nice. Yeah, it is. It, it lets you just set up and maybe even have a piece of protection up for it. Yeah, because if it didn't have haste, I would say this card desperately wants haste, and it sucks. But now that it has haste, it's like, okay, you can get some stuff done. Yeah, you don't have to jump through any hoops to give it haste. It just has haste. Yeah, th- so this deck's synergy is just, like, all over the place. It has legends. A lot of them want to attack, but then the legends just do random stuff like this, and you're just kind of confused. Now let's go to Moira Urborg Haunt. When you're when it hits a player, you're which is okay, we kind of want to do that. You can reanimate a creature that was put there from your graveyard this turn. How are we supposed to do that? This is, a, I don't understand this. Uh, it just feels like, the, again, maybe part of the Blade Wing deck is like where this belongs. The problem with this card, one, it only has Menace. It does come down decently early, but this isn't as, that isn't, this isn't good early. We're trying to put things from the battlefield to the graveyard. Yeah, and one of the main ways to do this, Sack Outlets, this deck doesn't have those. This deck isn't doing that, so this card just doesn't fit in this deck. It's probably fine in its own world, but I also think it's going to struggle to sneak through. It's only a 3-2, and its evasion is weak in Menace. See, the more I think about this, the more I don't like it, uh, just in general. It's like, just it just flickers a creature, because it has to be in play. And then it's just in play again. So you need, like, ETBs, but is it really worth all that? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Yeah, it's not really that great. Next, uh, the Prairigan Dynamo. This looks like it could be good in a lot of different commander decks because it's a 3-mana 1-5, and you pay one to tap to copy an activated ability of a legend. Now, you would think that'd be great with any commander with an activated ability. No, it can't do it from your commander for some ungodly reason. I really hate that about this card. It feels like a cool commander design where it's like, Dang, okay, our activated ability commanders, we got something that works with it. Nope. No, we don't. We have crappy this that can only copy other Legends abilities. That's kind of sad. It, it really is kind of sad. I mean, we already have, like, some of these equipment that, you know, Stryonic Resonator copies triggered abilities, and the 
There's these uh, bracers that can't be activated. So could we not rebalance this? I don't know, but this is what we're left with. We're also left with Zarium, Golden Wind, possibly the worst card in the entire deck because it cares about when Griffins deal combat damage. Guess what we have none of besides this? Griffins. Yeah, again, this is just... Uh, it's a completely different deck. It doesn't, it doesn't. It's not even related remotely to this deck. Also, it just doesn't seem good. It's like it's it's either a commander or it's in a bulkman. I mean, it's only... It's it's bad because Griffins are bad, right? So it can be good, right? Because the card itself is good if Griffins are good. Well, I'm just saying, like, all these other cards, I can see the application. There's no application for this unless you build a whole new deck around it. Yeah, because Griffins stink. Yep. Uh, and the Reaver Cleaver, three mana to play, three mana to equip, and when that creature hits, well, you make treasures uh, when it deals its cre- you know, to player or Planeswalker. It's a lot. Um, I can see trying this card. It's Old Gnawbone is about 10 times better than this card, but you're in red. It's also legendary. I don't know. This card feels like it's too clunky. It's gonna. It's so much mana to get going. You're really going to feel it. I don't know how many treasures you have to make, but as soon as you make six, it's like, okay, I refunded my play and equip. Yeah. But uh, now I'm not, I'm not up anything. Yeah, and it's just it, it's so big for blowouts. If you go, if you go play equip and then the creature dies, it's... That is six mana for nothing, and that feels really rough. Is this the Mirari's Wake of equipment? Um, at least, Mar- like Mirari's Wake, I feel like um, you, if it stays around, you will get going. Mm. For this, it's there's no guarantees. Like if you if this sticks around for two or three turns, it could do nothing still. Right, you could not have a big creature, or you already have a big creature, and now this encourages somebody to remove it or something. It's gonna it's just can put you really far behind on tempo. But this is the card a lot of people are talking about. It's like. 15 bucks or so. It's Gerard's Hourglass Pendant. It's one mana. It's got Flash. And everybody's overreacting to the first line of text, which is skip extra turns that you would or your opponents would begin. Whatever. It's like flavor text. The actual ability is pay four, tap second, you get your artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and lands that are put there in the graveyard from the battlefield this turn back into play. That's the real juice. Yeah, this card's good. Um, uh, the, I, I like that you get the hate for extra turns and in certain metas. That'll be great. Uh, that's a meta call only, really. Never really a reason to just turn to this card. Yeah, exactly. You're going to play... I really like this in artifact-centric decks. Uh, my, my perfect example is Oscar. I think this is a perfect Oscar card where you can just make two of them and then, you know, return your stuff. You can... Oscar has the ability to sack all of his stuff and then return all of his stuff and yeah. do stuff with that. So that's pretty strong, especially if you have something like a Reckless Fire Weaver out that can just end the game. Yeah, or combos with a board wipe or some kind of weird shenanigans like that. Yeah, exactly. It's a, pretty, it's a fairly strong card. So now we have to do some budget ads. We need two mana mana rocks. Uh, the main reason is our commander, If even if we switch it, both of our commanders cost one and a Mardu, meaning that any two mana rock, as long as our fixing's good, will cast us our commander on turn three, which is huge and gets you way ahead. Yeah, we're desperate. We only have we only have uh, Felwar Stone and Arcane Signet in this deck, so we need Mind Stone, all three Signets, all three Talismans. None of them are that much more expensive than, like, a dollar, so... Get as many of those in here as you can. Yeah. Uh, also, search for glory. 50 cents, three mana. The search for a snow permanent, legendary permanent. All right, I'm in. I mean, this is going to be three mana search for basically anything in your deck. 50 cents. I'm totally down to play it's this. A cute on little tutor. On budget, it's good. It's also Yawgmoth's Vile Offering at like 35 cents. Five mana. You kill something and you bring something back into play. And all you have to do is control a legendary creature to be able to cast this. That is flavor text in this deck. We, we have that. Yeah, exactly. It's very easy to have that. It's... It, it is a decent rate. Uh, the thing, I know that commanders are always legends, but being this deck will literally always have the legend, which is an extra bump up for this card. Uh, Even if you have nothing, you can go legend, this. Yes, exactly. Uh, next, Micaeus the Lunark. Just a legend you can play out super early. It's a two drop. It's a three drop. It's a four drop. It's whatever you need it to be. Get it out early and then just start putting counters on and putting counters on your team. Yeah, it helps the beatdown plan for very cheap. You know, and it's like, all right, I'm trying to attack. Well, here's an extra counter on my team and I'll do it next turn too. Also, I like Kalein Reclusive Painter. 25 cents. It makes a treasure when it enters. Importantly, it ramps you from two to four. So you can play Dihada on turn three with a little dummy jump blocker to, to block with. But Dihada makes treasures. So you can really get something bigger. I guess even Micaeus, but you can make something bigger if you want to spend treasure mana on it. Yeah, it has even more synergy because Diata makes treasures to go with Kalein. Five non-budget ads. Relic of Legends is $3. It's still kind of on the budget side, but not quite as much. You get to tap, untap Legends to make mana. It turns, it turns your Legends into mana dorks. Yeah, that goes to this card maybe going up or not. Uh, I know Decanter of Endless Water started going up when people wanted it, and this one is, like, really sweet, even though it's an uncommon. Yeah, I mean, it's classic... Um, 
what are these things called? They're, it's a manolith with upside. If you have the deck that exactly fits this manolith with upside, get it. Get it in there. Uh, also, legendary lands. You how to can draw them, and a lot of creatures can make, maybe care about them. So let's add Sokinzan, Takanuma, and Aganjo from the new coming out of Neon Dynasty from $3 to $6, or Aganjo Castle at $10, or Shinka for $12. That's just going to really spiffy spiffy up, tighten up your mana base. Yeah, uh, look look for any land that enters untapped, makes one mana. You can just replace your basics with these. Yeah, flagstones of Trocare. You don't need a ton of basics. Yeah, exactly. So just you want these lands in your deck. They, they don't mana fix you, but they synergize with your deck in other ways. Yeah, because you're just cutting planes. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could have a legendary board wipe? No, uh, that's not possible. Well, we have one in the deck. It's Urza's Runus Blast. I want another one. How that's about not possible. A better one. The Meat Hook Massacre, currently $45.00. But it's legendary enchantment. I'm in. I mean, this card, uh, Meat Hook Massacre, is definitely a really good magic card. In yeah, this if, you're, format. if you're not comboing, it's pretty sweet. You know, we were we were low on it when we were thinking at combos. Well, when combos were in our meta, but now that they're not, this thing just keeps going up in in the play order. Yeah, it's very. It's, I just want to play this card. Yeah, it's super good. This followed by any other board wipe, also super annoying. Say, there's like. 10, 10 creatures you can't get rid of. Just play this and then follow up with your uh, Toxic Deluge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's go to Ember Cleave. $6 legendary equipment. If we're already trying to get into the red zone, this is just going to make our best thing even better than double what it was. Yeah, um, Ember Cleave itself is just one of the one of the best beatdown cards. Add in the fact that it's a legend, and I'm in every single time. It's not even close. Yeah, you had me at Ember. Did I? I don't know. Because Ember sounds like a bad card. It, it does sound like a bad it card. It sounds like one mana deal, one to third creature. Oh, it really does. Let's go to about Mox Amber. Zero mana on taps for a color of any legendary creature or planeswalker you control. Great. We have a lot. It's $44, though. Probably worth it in this deck. It's basically just Moxin, but you have to have played something, anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that um, a lot of people make the argument that if you're – it doesn't matter. You have a commander. Um, play Max Amber in every deck. Eh, I'm not really on that train. If I can guarantee you have uh, something out with this pretty much every single game, it's always going to be online except when my board gets wiped. I'm in 100%. Max Amber is incredible in this deck. It's a Max in this deck. My thoughts about this deck are just that it is completely unfocused. Um, overall, it's fine, and it has creatures. It has legends, but they don't really synergize. You don't really have a game plan. And I'm not sure what you're really supposed to do to win other than just combat without any backup plan at all. You got to cut those legends that just are for other There's, decks and then get in some aggressive legends so you can actually beat down. There are so many bad legends. Just, I mean, for the easiest example, Ashling the Pilgrim. What does that do? Nothing in this deck. Yeah, carry, carry Zev. Let's get some, I don't know, like Zergo Helm Smash or something. Let's really beat people up. Exactly, yeah. So just, you want to just, you got to get rid of these legends that are just legends for the sake of being legends because Carry Zev is not a good Commander Magic card. I know do, it makes Regavan, but it's not the Regavan you're thinking. You could do better. Uh, how about Painbow? We got the, this is the second Commander deck. Face Commander, Jared Carthalian. He's Wooburg for a five loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, you make a 3-3 Kava with Trample that's all colors, minus three, Choose up to two target creatures for each of them. Put a number of plus one, plus one counters on it, equal to the number of colors it is, and minus six, which is very close to five. Return target multicolored card from your graveyard to your hand. If that card was all colors, draw a card and make two treasure tokens. And obviously, Jared can be your commander. All right, the game plan is simple. Play multicolored spells. Even more specifically, it kind of wants to go five colors on these spells. Yeah, but this deck is kind of just play multicolored spells and then hope to win with... Some of your kind of big creatures, it doesn't really go that big, doesn't really go that wide, doesn't really have slam dunk closers, so you got to add some of those. Yeah, I'm not really sure what this deck's game plan is again. Just uh, even like the last deck, like last deck was sort of based on combat. It, this just f it feels like a combobbled mess of something that can't really string together a victory unless things go really well for it. Yeah, the only cards I saw that can contribute to game enders is like there's Nethroi. But that really requires you untapping with all the stuff you get back. Primeval Spawn's big, kind of. And then Iridian Maelstrom. I thought, I'm like, this is, okay, one-sided board wipe. We're taking people out. But then Joe counted, and they're like, hey, there's only eight creatures that don't die to this in the deck. And nine if you count Jared making three threes. Yeah, exactly. And two of them, two of them are vanilla creatures that just say they're five colors. What is that? Yeah, there's the there's the four mana like whatever three three. I don't even know what that thing yeah, is. Yeah, the guild the guild guy. It's all colors, and then there's um, a new one that's like green but not green. It's all colors. There's no, there's that that one's at least fine. That card does something. Yeah, yeah. But no, it doesn't do something. Fusion Elemental, which Ooh. is just 
But get, what, get that out of here before I mean, you even sleeve it up. Get that fusion. I think one off. of the biggest problem is if 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 when you build this deck, it is a good card in the deck fusion elemental, then the deck can't be good. <laughs> and that's sad. Now, the average mana value is 3.63. There's 19 tap lands and four conditional tap lands. Whew, well, you're going to be a turn behind for sure. That is silly. That, those are absolutely silly numbers. 19 lands that automatically enter the battlefield tapped. No, thank you. And yeah, we're going to get to new cards in a second. Um, and I know they put something that works with tap lands. That doesn't excuse this. This is absolutely atrocious. It's kind of a lot. It's way too many. It's it, this is a this deck will always be a turn behind. Always. All right, the best reprints from this deck. Not much better than Legends Legacy. We got Crystal Quarry at ten dollars, Cascading Cataracts at five dollars. They both filter for Wooberg, but I think you go down a mana when you filter. I mean, they're fifteen dollars combined. Not really sure who needs these. I think Cataracts he's like pioneer play now. She's a little modern play too. Uh Okagachi Five color legend, it's whatever. This card, I think, is such butts. Five dollar legend, so there's your reprint value. Maelstrom Nexus has already been reprinted twice. Here's another one. It's only four bucks before now, and I got to imagine we're at bulk status now. It's got to get there soon, eventually, right? And Bad River in the land slot is 250. These cards, I mean, again, we're just kind of weak on reprints. They're not horrible, but they're not good. Bad River is a nice one in the budget, like lower level section, because we don't have some of these um, allied slow fetches. I didn't think we had a, a new border Bad River. I don't think we've ever had one. Really? Okay, well, cool. Now we do. All right, so now it's time to hop into what new cards we got in this pre-con. First, we have Jensen Carthelian, the, which is, what's his name? Jared's brother. It's Jared's brother. If It's a two-color legend, but it filters at Wooberg, so you can make Wooberg with five mana. I don't know. This ability's not that good. First thing... If you have a good mana base, it's never going to actually do anything. But its real ability would be when you cast a multicolored spell, scribe one, and if it's a five-color spell, get a 4-4 four, four angel. That's nice. I like 4-4 four, four angels. This could be a neat little commander. You could probably, with the amount of cohesion in this deck, which is very little, you can easily one-for-one one swap, and you wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. Yeah, I, I hate the second ability. I just think filtering into Wooberg is not a strong ability at all. A lot of cards do it, and it's just, okay. Bad. I that, like the new Lotus that taps for Wooberg. That's at least interesting to me. Uh, but like filtering is just, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, the sad thing about that Lotus is it, it could be a decent card. If it didn't enter tapped. <laughs> it does enter tapped. It's kind of a bummer. We know it's not broken. How about uh, Unite the Coalition? From memory, this is seven mana instant. You choose five and you can repeat them. I think you phase out a permanent, draw a card, exile someone's graveyard, shock something, and then naturalize something. It's like just barely worth seven mana. You'd have to like draw three cards, and then, like, naturalize twice. And then you're kind of not really cheating anything. You just kind of got, like, a an okay spell. I don't really like this for seven. Yeah, seven mana is too much. This could cost five mana, I think, and be an actual good card. That would be sweet. But, it's, but instead, it's not. <laughs> instead, they really did not push it. And then there's Primeval Spawn. This is a ten mana, ten ten, Vigilance, Lifelink, Trample. And you have to cast it from your hand, because if you don't, you get nothing. Uh, you literally, it, instead of going to the battlefield, it gets exiled. And when it ETBs, you exile the top 10 cards of your library and you can do up to 10 mana worth of spells for free. That's pretty sweet. It, it's a big boy. It's a big boy. It costs 10 mana. You do get some more for free. And at least the body is relevant because it does have Vigilance and Lifelink and Trample. It, all three of these are relevant abilities, actually. I do like that about this card. 10 mana is quite a steep cost, though. Plus, Jared kind of wants you to have all five colors on a creature, hopefully with abilities, not like fusion elemental. So putting five counters on this thing, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, this next card, having haste, makes it pretty good, actually. Yeah, same with two-headed Hellkite. You want to put five counters on this one. It's a six-mana 5-5 five, five with some keywords, including haste and flying. And you draw two cards when it attacks. I think it has menace as the other one. I mean, the fact that this thing gets to attack the first turn you play it will get you your cards back. It's a, This is actually a solid card. I don't... like. Usually, like, there's a lot of five colors if I'm like, eh, shake my head because I don't like it. But this one, this one looks good. I mean, it just draws cards right away. Yeah, if you attack twice, you feel pretty sweet. You don't really care what happens after that. Yeah, we also have Tiller Engine. This is what I was alluding to earlier when I mentioned the tap lands. Makes this mana base playable. Two mana, one three, and when a tap land, when a land enters the battlefield tapped, you can either untap it or tap target, I think, permanent. Okay. You know, this is another thing for those Gates decks and for the bounce land tribal decks. Yeah, it just goes in very, very, very specific decks, and that's it. I mean, it's overall, 
bad. It's if your deck has a bad mana base, it's good. If your deck has a good mana base, it's bad. Right. So you can spend some mana, uh, some mana. You can spend some budget, not on a mana base, and still fix your mana base a little bit. Mana cannons want you to cast multicolored spells. It deals that much damage equal to the number of colors it is. This is probably one of the only other ways to close the game out, but you could only ever deal five damage at most. Yeah, I don't. Sometimes I don't understand how magic spells work because, like, you're like shooting a cannon, and the mana's coming out. But after you spent the mana, it's, I don't. The, can, the cannon's made of mana. I do not understand Magic: The Gathering. I will say that much. No, uh, we don't. <laughs> Obsidian Obelisk is a two mana mana rock, but enters tapped. It makes colorless, or for multicolored spells, it makes a color. Uh, it's a little sad that it just tapped. I think this could just enter untapped and be a totally fair mana rock, but unfortunately, it's a little weak, but still completely fine for this deck. Yeah, it'll fall into the mediocre category. Yeah. You probably won't play it very much. Two mana tap mana rocks are terrible. They, yeah, they're playable. They're, they're, uh, Iridian Maelstrom, it's, I just talked about it. It's the destroy all non Wooburg creatures. It's probably going to be good in this deck. If you can find some more Wooburgs, there's not a ton that exist, but. I think this card makes them really tempting because it's just, all right, Plague Wind, no one else has Wooburg creatures, I promise, and then crack in for like 20-something. I'm just so sad because most of the Wooburg creatures, creatures that cost Wooburg, just stink. And it's, it is it is a little sad because this deck really wants it. It's like Fusion Elemental is a very bad magic card. It's yeah, I wonder if you can get Div Visit Reborn in this deck somehow, if there's enough two-color multicolors that could end up in the deck that it would be good. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Even uh, the 6-6 six, six flyer is better than Fusion Elemental. Yeah, and this was also the card you alluded to earlier. It says Falgi Wayfinder. It's ugh, the worst wording on a card ever. Two in a green. It is all colors, but this doesn't affect its color identity. They're so clever. It's so weird. Uh, but if you... <laughs> it's not even about being clever. It's just It's weird for something to be all colors, but not affect its color identity. Because how is that possible? That is, like, weird. The like, card has abilities... In your bulk bin, the the idea of color identity and just saying it doesn't apply is completely like foreign to me. And your multicolored spells have convoke, which is actually pretty strong. Another thing that's going to make this deck stronger is adding cards that help out the game plan. They're just generally good. So the budget ones first. General Ferris Rokirak is going to be sweet in this deck. Every spell is multicolored, so you're going to make four fours whenever you cast them for 24 cents. Yeah, that's pretty simple. I think this card actually, if, you're, if your deck is high percentage multicolors, this card overperforms every single time. It just makes an army super fast. You're going to be casting spells no matter what, right? Because you're playing Magic the Gathering. In order to play the game and participate in the game, you have to cast spells. And if your spells are multicolored, this is awesome. As a brand of bonus, can't be sourced to plowshare, no snuff out, no deadly rock. He's immune to some removal. He's immune, he's immune to a lot of removal. Yes, uh, Bring to Light, this is a free roll. 30 cents for a five mana thing. You're converging all five colors. So just go tutor something into play. Five, four, three, two, one mana cost. And I like that Iridian Maelstrom is going to be five mana. So that's this could be a second copy of that. Yeah, uh, five. So we talk about like five mana tutor is like not where you want to be. The thing that like takes us from like, you know, being a diabolic tutor that does nothing is it cast it. So it's the spell. It's cast the spell from your deck. Up to five mana because we're in a five color deck. I think brings it literally just perfect here. It's it, you really have to play it. I yeah. think uh, Moonvale Regents another nice one. Eighty three cents. It's not multicolored, but when you cast a spell, you can discard your hand and draw cards equal to the number of colors the spell was. So as soon as you have one, two, or three cards in hand, all your cards are just straight up card draw. Yeah, you're just gonna yeah, and you can choose not to do this. This ability is a may. Yeah. So when you have good card hand that you want to keep, you can cast your three color spell and be like, no, I don't want to because these three cards mana are better. Plus, when it dies, you get to deal five to something. That also is true. I forgot about that part. Uh, that's also on the card. Gigantha the Wellspring is a you could just put it in your deck for starters, but it's you know you pay five mana and then it it ends up tapping for Wooburg. We can only pay for pips, which is good in a deck like this where we have. Lots we're of, all pips. We're, we're lots and lots of pips. And also, something really cool is a task for your commander. And without changing anything in this deck, if this, is, this could be your only upgrade. Take out one card, Time Wipe, and replace it with this. And now your deck plays with this as your companion. Yeah, you can companion Gigantha in this deck. Just take out Time Wipe, probably one of the better cards in the deck. And then you can have a sweet companion. It's probably just worth it. I mean, you get it every single game. And I, it doesn't look like much, but I actually have a deck with Gigantha, and 
I just play it a lot. It turns out it just comes and play a lot, and then when it doesn't die, you feel amazing. Well, it doesn't die. It casts your commander for five mana. It just taps for your commander. It literally just plays your commander or plays a ton of spells in your hand. Gigantus is actually a strong companion. It turns out just having an eighth card in your opening hand every single game. Doesn't really matter what it is. Inc- incredibly strong, yeah. When you can just do it's a free roll, like literally just a free roll. Totally. World Tree. Staple for your mana base, probably one of the first lands you want to add. Three bucks. As long as you have six lands, they all add for they all tap rainbow. And if you have gods in your deck, which you could do, you can go find them all for a thousand mana. Yeah, that part doesn't really matter so much. This is all about just this is a way to cheaply fix your mana base. As long as you get lands in play and then you play the world treat, now you have Wooberg lands, and that's totally awesome. And you, you don't have to like break the budget going all out in like chromatic lands for your, your sketchy mana base. Yeah, lastly, Tome of the Guild Pact, kind of janky. It's five mana tests for a color. Uh, but you can, whenever you cast a multicolored spell, you draw a card. I just thought it was cool. 25 cents. All right, now we need to do some non-budget ads. My first one, $9 for Bloom Tender. We had in the deck the uh, Faber Elder, right. which is a totally reasonable card. And, you know, maybe even a little bit, not, but no, it's not better. Maybe even good in this deck because uh, it actually is so in a multicolor. But Bloom Tender, two mana. You can end up tapping for five colors. This card is really good. Boom Tender obviously belongs in this deck. It's weird. It doesn't. It won't really ramp you into your commander because what I really want to do is play uh, Jared on turn five or whenever I have five lands and then just tap for Wooberg with Bloom Tender and play something else that's big. Yeah, exactly. And we have Wooberg stuff in this deck, believe it or not. Plenty. Uh, we really got to close, though. This deck can't close to save its life. So let's get Maelstrom Water in here. Eight mana, seven dollars. Gives all your creatures haste. Let's you beat in way harder. Yeah, Cascade, Cascade, also super important. This card would be really bad if it only gave you creatures haste. It'd still probably be all right, but the Cascade is like 70% of the card. It's it's, it's so much more than 75% <laughs> of the card. It's like 95 because it, there's no way you would ever play seven or eight, eight mana, mana, seven, five creatures you control have haste. Yeah, it's, uh, let's go with 95% of the card is 81% the Cascade. 81% of the card. Master Water, <laughs> I would look for more cards like this that are multicolored and can get huge beats in. Because you're not going to be able to close games. Yeah, I think Ma- Master Wonder is a great card. Uh, it gets so much value so easily. Ramos Dragon Engine. We want to cast multicolored spells, but okay. For each of its colors, we're putting counters on this thing, and we can remove it to make Wooberg Wooberg. Yeah, and it's $17. Well worth it. This is going to be must kill, or you probably just win, just based on the sheer number of things you're going to do. After I cast Ramos, I'm going to be casting like that Coalition card. I'm just going to draw five, because it's going to... Make double Wooberg, and then I'm gonna cast more cards, and I'm gonna bury you. Yeah, it's really strong. It's super solid. Oh, what a great, what a great card for this deck. There's also Urza's Filter. It's a little jankier. All multicolored spells cost two less to cast. It's five bucks. This is depending on the version. If you're like trying to use Iridian Maelstrom and like specifically Wooberg stuff with five pips, I wouldn't recommend it because you're not gonna get any cost reduction, and you're gonna randomly help out opponents. But if you're the like maybe more like the Niv Mizzet side, or you're gonna have a bunch of cards with Colorless, the Maelstrom Wanderer side, this could be sweet. Okay, yeah. Urza's Filter just reduces all of your spells, at least a little bit. Can pay commander decks, at least, uh, is something. I say to visit, by the way, because I'm going to need to clarify, because it puts a bunch of other multicolor cards in your hand. Yes. Last but not least, we have Pillar of the Peruns, which taps for a mana of any color, but it can only be used on multicolored spells. $8. It's a free roll. Pretty much everything's multicolored, so obviously it's a no-brainer. And the other thing we want to throw out while we're here is take a second and tune up this mana base. It doesn't, like, whatever untapped duels you have, like, any triumphs you own need to go into this deck. You're really going to have to pay some attention, give some attention to it. You just, you really do need, uh, five color decks are not a laughing joke, laughing matter when it comes to the mana base. It is, it's a lot of work. Uh, you can take this tap land route, but you have to accept your deck will be a turn behind every single game. Or if you're going to actually invest in the deck, I would put, you know, fetches, shocks. Uh, if you have duels, obviously put your duels in the deck. This deck needs it really, really bad. Five color mana bases are tough. You could use Urborg, Yavi Maya too. Yep, those they're they're tough only on the the, the wallet. I think they, once you get oh the, yeah the cards, it's perfect. You'll never have to worry about anything. Yeah, exactly. It's just ten fetches, ten shocks, or ten duels. And I would probably play like five triumphs. I would not play all ten. And then play the like five uh, like rainbow lands that we have. That yeah, are, there's so many rainbow lands: command tower, path of ancestry, all that stuff. Exotic orchard. Yeah, there's, there's ref- reflecting pool, city of brass. It, yeah, there's literally there's so many of these. There's literally just so many. My idea, my my thing for this deck isn't. Uh, is that it feels like we don't have any synergy here. Um, it really feels like it's just completely lacking any real direction. I get it, yeah. Multicolored, cast a lot of spells, cast five-color spells, but in the deck there's not even that many five-color spells. They're all just doing their own thing. And they're all separate, just their own branches. I like the idea 
but I don't think it's very cohesive. Yeah, maybe you could unify it with Jared's minus three, where you're just like, all right, I'm going to put counters on things. Maybe you kick the multicolored cards like Windy Constrictor or something, and you like make sure you're doubling counters, and then you're putting ten counters on things with, uh, I don't know, doubling season even. It's just like, maybe you could do that. Yeah, I think that's that's completely fair, but... Oh, yeah, another weird thing is like Jared's ultimate. He ultimates right away almost, and the next turn you play him, but get a card back? Two treasures draw a card? Kind of disappointing. I don't... What am I supposed to do with that? His ultimate is basically nothing. It, it, and, like, really? Like, not just basically. It is nothing. You I got a minus three, I think. Raise dead? What? Why are we raising dead? What Raise dead. Regrowth, draw, I guess, technically. Regrowth draw card. It's like... Two treasures? Mm-mm. No. No, thank you. Mm-hmm. I think his card is super bad. Yeah, that, that, that ultimate's rough. Maybe that maybe ultimate, we, not the card. The card's fine. Right. Maybe we would just one for one switch with Jensen. I don't even know if I would. It's tough. I mean, <laughs> I do. Cause at least Jer- Jensen gives you a way to close. Uh, like, Jared does at least make Peters. Like, yeah, those are four for five, but it's only, there's only like 10, 11, maybe 12 five color spells in the whole deck. So it's like, okay, so we're going to get, we can we can max out at 12 angels. That's if we cast every single one of the Wooberg spells in that. I'm That's still, true. Jared at least Jared at least can go make a Kavu, make it an eight eight, and then start beating with it. Even yeah. though that's fusion elemental. There, least, there is that. We can. Uh, why is fusion elemental is, is probably good in this deck? As ba- much as I hate that card, I really want trample. Let's give trample somehow. Final thought in the deck though. Uh, Jared Carthalian and Jensen Carthalian are brothers. Is this a call out to Jensen Ackles and Jared Padecki of supernatural fame? Jensen and Jared, brothers. Uh, Who else could it be? Possibly. Uh, we're, we're, we already did these pre, uh, pre-cons for the last set, which was, oh, God, Baldur's Gate four years ago. You four remember, pre-cons ago? Remember, remember Baldur's Gate? So go check out those pre-cons here and tell us what you think. Peace out, Trap Scouts.